Hello, my name is Matthew Hall, and this is lab number two about the motion of a falling object. Our purpose is to graphically and mathematically model the relationship between the various forces that act on an object during free fall. When an object is dropped from free fall, it is released from a height where the only force acting on it is gravity. Therefore, the net force does not equal zero. However, during the process, in a realistic scenario, forces that um, act on an object include the force of gravity, which is mass times our acceleration due to gravity, and drag force. Drag force opposes the force of gravity with a square relationship with the terminal velocity of a falling object. Now, what this implies is that um, eventually this terminal velocity makes it so that the net force over this object is equal to zero, um, which means that it's uh, falling slower than if, if an object is only affected by gravity and it's at a constant velocity. And this is where the moment um, momentum update formula can help us by determining a final velocity. Here's a tracker model. Um, I dropped a paper plate in this instance, which accrues a lot of um, a lot of air resistance, as you'll eventually tell in the graphs. Here's some of the coding. Um, you can see the, the initial vectors for position and velocity were, were zero, and we were assuming that the, um, the drop was in a negative y direction. And then the um, proportionality constant for drag force ended up being 0.55 through a series of process of elimination and um, trial and error. The net force is created by um, the weight force and a drag force, which opposes the motion as according to the net force on the right side. According to the computational result, results, the force of gravity remains constant throughout the, the duration of the drop, and it always holds the same magnitude. However, the drag force, it initially begins at zero, and it quickly rises to a to a, um, a force that is equal to the force of gravity according to Newton's third law that every force has an equal and opposite force. Now looking at the data and the observations from the observed data through the tracker model, the, the predicted computational model, and the predicted model that only used gravity, we can definitely tell that the predicted model and the observed model are very close together with my um, predicted B value, but the force of gravity without the drag force had a very large effect on the vertical distance of the object. And this is because, because of our air resistance. Because the paper plate was very flimsy and it did not have enough mass and it had too much surface area, it was dragged along by the air resistance and it could not flow straight, which is why the, the end result of the predicted data without um, only due to gravity is so low. Now this, this says a lot about the terminal velocity. It means that air resistance does have, um, air resistance and drag force has a very positive effect on grav on the, the motion of an object in free fall. Now the question is, what happens to the terminal velocity if an object has an initial velocity? The terminal velocity remains the same. That's because Terminal velocity relates to drag force and it relates to gravity. As you remember in the in the coding before, the um, ball's velocity, which is the terminal velocity, that is related to drag force. And nowhere do we see any account for initial velocity. What this implies is that um, even with the initial velocity, gravity will, will remain constant throughout the duration of the fall, which means that the drag force also remains equivalent at its maximum point to the force of gravity throughout the time, so the terminal velocity will always remain the same. Thank you.